Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Tinker's Construct 2, Modifiers. Today we're going to be covering quite a lot of, uh, well, just about everything that I could possibly get into this video for modifiers for Tinker's Construct 2. Uh, now keep in mind, this is primarily going to be for tools and weapons and shields. Uh, this is not going to uh, work out quite as exacting as it might for bows and uh, range weaponry. But let's get into this. And as I said before, uh, ranged weapons are pretty much going to be covered in another video. But uh, for now, this should pretty much give you an idea, and uh, you might even be able to use this information to help you build your ranged weapon of choice. So let's start off with redstone. Redstone is going to be your first uh, go-to for most items. Uh, it works the same, but differently than it did previously uh, <laughs> in uh, Tinker's Construct. So by adding redstone to tools, it will effectively increase their mining speed as well as uh, potentially uh, better their attack speed. In this case, I currently have uh, a whole bunch of redstone being added to just a regular broadsword here. And you can see that uh, the status on here, 1.6 attack speed, after it gets 45 out of 50 pieces of redstone, uh, then increases to 1.89 attack speed, making it much faster to swing, and uh, you don't have to wait for it to recharge to get that full attack bonus. This works uh, equally as well with things like a pick or a hammer, uh, depending on the tool that you would like to see. In this case, you've got your mining speed of 2, attack speed of 1.2, mining speed of 7.65. It's really drastic uh, on its uh, upswing for how fast it will increase on uh, like tools as opposed to weapons. But you'll notice that the attack speed is actually no different. Uh, now, this is because this is primarily a tool and not a weapon. Now, if I take something like, say, a uh, hammer, it will actually work in both manners here. You can see that the, uh, well, the mining speed is 0.8 and the uh, attack speed is 0.8. Now if I go over here, you can see that the mining speed is now 3. It being a hammer, it mines a lot more blocks. So it's not going to have as drastic of an upswing of mining speed, but still that is a considerable increase. And you'll also notice that the attack speed has actually increased a bit as well. That's because this is also used on occasion as an offensive weapon. So, something to keep in mind. Now, if you have something like a uh, mattock here, which is primarily uh, doesn't have any extra parts to it, it's just two heads and a tool handle, you'll notice that it has uh, a mining speed of 1.9 and an attack speed of 0.9. Now, if we go over here, you see its mining speed increases to 7.27, and its attack speed is still 0.9. It is still considered a tool, even though it has double heads and can be quite good for very, very early game, uh, uh, well, offensive uh, abilities. But there you go. And you can, uh, you know, just keep adding more and more of these uh, to a maximum of five levels, increasing the speed to whatever you, uh, you know, need it to be. And uh, it, it will work for ranged weaponry as well. I should feel that I feel that I should mention that as well. But uh, there you go. Redstone. Next up, we've got Lapis, which is going to give you luck and or looting on your tools and weapons. Now, here's the thing, though. It'll give you both. Uh, to give an example, let me grab this here. So to start off with, I've got a wooden pickaxe here that I'm going to put in place. Now, it's not exactly going to be uh, the best of uh, weapons or tools, so uh, let's actually upgrade that a little bit better. There we go. I just replaced it with a Manilin pickaxe, and I also have an extra Manilin pickaxe here just for reference uh, material. Now, if I were to put lapis on a, uh, a sword or just a regular weapon and not a tool, it will definitely give you a looting effect. Now, here's the thing. It will give you a looting and luck effect depending on how it's used. So uh, if I, for instance, make a lucky manilin pickaxe here, that got it luck one on there. Let's actually give it up to luck three so that you guys can see the overall effect of it. Uh, kind of exaggerated so that you can best understand how this is going to work. Now I have a spider over here, and if I kill the spider with a regular pickaxe, it might take a couple hits, but he drops, let's see here, I don't have any of those uh, drops in my inventory. Don't worry about that little blue glob, that's a different mod that's installed right now. But a spider eye and one string, so we're going to get rid of those. Now let's drop another spider and kill it with a manilin pickaxe that has been enhanced with uh, the uh, lapis. Now I got three string and two spider eyes, so you can see that it already is working for that. Now if I were to get some ores, 
For instance, I now have some lapis lazuli ore. I'm gonna put a couple blocks down here. Uh, let's get rid of those. And I'm going to mine the first one with the standard pickaxe, the standard Manilin pack pickaxe that is. And as you can see, I got eight lapis from that one. Now let's use the lucky one. Oh, I got a lot more, I got 18. So already you can see that uh, it can be extremely beneficial that you can uh, use your, uh, well, looting and luck on the same tool and or weapon. So it's it's kind of a two for one on this. Now it doesn't stack with everything though. I mean, you can't use it with Silk Touch. So there are going to be some restrictions on this. Uh, of course, there are only uh, th uh, three levels maximum as well. So you can't really get like looting luck five. That would be a, a bit much, <laughs> but I, I think it's already pretty powerful as it is. So now we move on to the next one which is quartz. Now this adds a sharpness effect uh, and it's it's about, now th this is just a, 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 to give you an idea, this is not exactly accurate number, <laughs> definitely not exactly accurate number. This is just to give you an idea. Now each type of weapon uh, and its stats will vary. So let me get some of the, the plain equivalents. There we go. I now have put them all in my inventory. So I've got the plain versions and the sharpened versions. They all have sharpness uh, three on them, uh, so they don't have any more, uh, uh, well, any more modifiers. But uh, you can apply nether quartz as well as blocks of nether quartz, so it can uh, speed things along quite well. And uh, by applying that, you'll get up to three levels of sharpness, uh, and it, it's quite quite nice, um, really, <laughs> if I have to say. It's a really good just damage increaser. Uh, now, if you'll see here, the man, the uh, they're all going to be Manilin. So this rapier here, its attack is 5.8. After adding three levels, it's increased it to 8.69, which is, you know, it, it's actually only about like three-ish, you know, attack, which isn't that much. It's like a heart and a half, but that's a rapier. It scales with different weapons and their uh, different uh, attack rates. So if I've got a Matic at 11.5, then I go over here, 15.68. Well, you can see that, well, that, that that's closer to four. Uh, that's strange, but it's the same number. And then you've got your cleaver, which is 18.2, jumps up to 23 and a half. So that, that's kind of a, about a difference of five for those three levels. Then you go with an excavator, which 11.9 to 18.12. So each different tool set could have a different increase in its uh, stats on how it's affected, uh, as well as, you know, its attack rate being low, it will increase it very minorly. Uh, and as it goes up, it will increase it even more. But to a point, I mean, uh, right here, you can see that the excavator, while less than the cleaver, will actually increase much more from getting sharpened than the cleaver will, uh, at, at least its total bonus from just being sharpened. So it's relative to the type of tool that it is, but the more damage uh, you get with this is, is often really great. And you don't have to worry about uh, getting rid of the... Um, or of uh, placing other modifiers on these quite as much, uh, you know, before or after. It should apply it uh, properly mathematically, <laughs> regardless of the tool. All right, now we've got diamonds. Diamonds are going to be your best friend. Uh, you can only apply one diamond once <laughs> to whatever tool uh, you may have currently. So it's something that you're going to want to uh, decide carefully. It can be very beneficial or just minorly so. Uh, to give an example, let's put a wooden sword in here and drop a single diamond in place. And you can see that it is going to go from an attack four to an attack five. Of course, it'll use up one of the modifier slots and the attack speed is 1.6, 1.6. So it's basically just increasing the attack damage, but also the durability shoots up an extra 500 durability. So it can be really nice to add a durability bonus and a little bit of attack bonus to your weapons. Now, let's try a different item here. Let's add in a uh, hammer, per se, which is kind of a, a, a tool and a weapon. Now, what is this going to change? Your durability, of course, shoots up 500. The mining level increases from stone to iron. So with this, your uh, diamonds will increase the mining speed on the tools up to, but not past, obsidian. So it's something to consider there if you want it to, uh, it, it will up to and including obsidian, but not past it. So it will not enhance you to uh, mine cobalt or ardite in the nether. 
but uh, you've got your definite benefits here. You're, of course, getting that extra attack damage, uh, and it is not really going to increase the attack speed or anything on this, but uh, hey, you know what? It increases your mining level, your durability, and your attack. It's kind of an all-in-one uh, modifier, which is really nice. Now, here's something to note. I've added in the Matic here. And you can see the durability shoots up that 500 like before, but the axe level and the shovel level, they've both still stone. Well, that's because you're not mining ores with that. And you really don't need to uh, mine much with, <laughs> with it because it's a matic. It's not a pick. It's not intended to mine ores. Uh, now, the mining speed, though, is increased from 1.9 to 2.38. So there is kind of a difference there. And the attack isn't one whole attack point. It's actually like 0.9. So it is going to vary from different items, uh, if you notice in here. And the attack speed stays the same, uh, 0.9 for the attack speed, but the mining speed definitely increases with that. So once again, it still affects it in a, a very proper way that seems to work out really well. Now, if you do something like a wooden battle sign here, uh, now it's just a battle sign, I guess you could say, you've got your attack rate is going to increase, not as much uh, because it is a shield more than it is a weapon, but uh, the a attack damage is going to go up, but the attack speed and so on isn't really going to benefit. It's just going to increase your durability. All right, next up, we're going to have emeralds. Emeralds make things kind of, uh, well, they're, they're kind of an increase, kind of a decrease compared to diamonds. It all depends on your existing tool stats, uh, but it gives you a bonus of 50% durability and a plus one mining level up to and including, but not beyond, iron. And just like diamonds, it's a single use. You can combine diamonds and emeralds uh, on the same tool. That's not a problem. Uh, and just so that you can see here, let me place a wooden sword in the tool forge here. We're going to toss in emeralds, and you'll see that the uh, durability has gone from 82 to 123. But if I were to switch this out with a manilan sword, you'll see that there's a much greater benefit, 753 to 1129. So it can definitely increase the durability, uh, you know, a, a lot more depending on how you, it's used. Now, in this case, you can see that the Matic 60 is increased by 50% up to 90. So that's 50% of the 60 as the example. So it's it should increase it there. And the mining level is staying the same because, once again, it's not an ore mining tool like a pick is. Uh, so therefore, it's going to be, you know, 75 to 112. This one here, mining level stone to iron. Uh, it is going to increase it and enhance it if it has that option too. But it's not going to go past iron. And here we go with Silk Touch. Uh, to add Silk Touch to your tool, you actually have to go through a sequence of, uh, of things here. To give an example, uh, a bunch of strings surrounding a gold ingot will get you a single silky cloth. Uh, and then you take, you make four of those totals, surround an emerald with it, and get a silky jewel. You then can apply that silky jewel to uh, tools and weapons as you desire. Primarily, you're going to want to use it on tools, though, uh, and you should be able to gain a Silk Touch ability. Now, if I have a Silk Touch sword and I use it to dig up the ground, uh, you'd think, hey, is that going to work? It does. Uh, if it's something that you can mine with your hand, then you should be able to get your grass block that way. Uh, but um, it is not going to work with uh, the luck or looting ability, uh, and uh, it, it does work it does not work with auto smelting either uh, which you can gain from certain material types so it does have its limitations i think it also uh, reduces the uh, damage that the tool will do as well so that's something to really take into consideration for instance this here is a 5.5 attack and you notice if it is enhanced with the silky jewel it then drops to 2.8 so this is mostly just used for uh, uh well for just getting those two, uh, the ores and grass blocks and whatever it is that you may need to get, it's not the best for mining with. Because if you also notice, the mining speed drops. It goes from 1.9 to 0.95. It doesn't change the uh, mining level, thankfully, but it does make it more a precision tool than anything else. So if you put this on a hammer, um, you're really going to want to think that through first. Because uh, you put it on a hammer and you're trying to mine a lot of blocks quickly, it kind of defeats the purpose. Because by that point, you're slowing yourself down considerably. All right, and here we have something that is now very famous, and that is reinforcement. Uh, this one here, uh, the reinforcement or reinforced modifier is amazing. It can make unbreakable tools and weapons. It's very, very good. And uh, if you can get writable 2, uh, now I'm, I'm going with Tinker's Construct 2, 
that is not using any enhancements like uh, the Tinker tool leveling or anything like that or iguana tweaks or, or whatever you want to add in there for extra modifier stuff. This is just based on the, uh, the original one. Now I've got here like a cobalt paper pig iron hammer that currently is uh, unbreakable or can be unbreakable because it has five modifiers. The reinforcement uh, modifier gives you a 20% chance to not use durability and that stacks so every time that you add one of those you increase it by 20 percent and therefore you can stack it up to a hundred percent making it unbreakable in most cases uh, it can break eventually <laughs> If used in something like machinery or whatnot, it may have some uh, glitching things like if you have uh, manilin parts on there or uh, durite, it has a possibility of actually using durability uh, instead of uh, non-using it. So therefore, you're going to want to be cautious uh, at best. Now, right here, I have like a, a paper scythe that is unbreakable because it had writing 2 on there, or writable 2 on there from the uh, all the paper pop parts. It also has uh, an iron handle, and uh, it's it's just been reinforced, so therefore it's, it's good to last forever as a harvesting tool. Uh, same thing with a matic, which is very often used with uh, Ender I.O. machines. Uh, I even have a cobalt head on this, just so that it can go much faster, uh, because you only need one head and one handle in order to get that writing 2 effect on there. Now, as much as you could add this uh, reinforcement to a weapon, you'll dull your weapon, in my opinion. Uh, you can make it an unbreaking weapon, but you're using up all the modifiers on just making it unbreaking. And often, repairing a weapon on rare occasion is much more, uh, I don't know, much better, because you can enhance the weapon in better ways to make it, well, a better weapon. Uh, can I say weapon one more time? So, let's see. Your cobalt here, this is writable too. It has momentum on there because it's got a cobalt head. It has a baconlicious uh, tasty effect on there. So let's enhance this several times over. And you're going to find out that there is an even better benefit to making tools uh, unbreaking than one might normally think. So as you can see, I'm currently mining away and there is no side effect to uh, the durability there and my hunger is actually going down because well I, I am mining but oh there we go I just munched it so hey I now have a, an ever growing ability to uh, well eat food constantly keep mining well within reason <laughs> uh, I realize it's a bit dark in here no problem I have a uh, glowing tool on my hotbar that I can also just kind of grab onto but uh, that just gives you an idea that you can also make yourself a permanent food source <laughs> as well as now it is a random chance for it to actually happen and for you to create uh, bacon you know from smashing uh, critters and stuff like that but it it with that unbreaking ability there's a very high chance it will never break or wear down on its durability even while you're eating the tool as I am doing now. <laughs> so it's it's something to, to consider there that uh, you can use it in multiple ways. Uh, Manilin typically will also wear on durability as well as durite, um, as well as, well, the ability to have it uh, baconlicious and tasty. But uh, the, the possibility for that to happen uh, if you're using the tool is so low that it's worthwhile to, uh, to go for that if you want to. Uh, but if you're using it in a machine, Eh, you're most likely gonna want to keep an eye on it. Next up we have beheading. This is a very traditional one. As you can see here I have a magma slime paper cleaver. <laughs> the the um, I believe the uh, the blade is just magma slime. Uh, we've got paper large plate, paper tough tool rod, and uh, a, a night slime tool rod as well just to give it a bunch of durability boost. But it has max levels of beheading on it right now, which is uh, currently 5, uh, because it has that writable 2 effect. And it's got a decent attack rate of 10.1. I mean, it has no enhancements for its damage, but what it allows you to do is if there are mobs nearby that you can uh, feasibly gain the heads by killing, then, well, let's... Oh, of course I had to spawn one with a full set of armor, so let's try and take him out as best we can and you get an, a very increased rate of uh, trying to obtain their heads. In this case I have a, a plus 70 percent chance uh, on getting a, a head by killing these guys. 
or zombies in this case. And there you go, I just got a zombie head. If it drops a head or has a possibility of dropping a head or a skull, like a wither skeleton, then therefore you should be able to uh, gain the head with an increased possibility for the more levels you gain. Now, putting it on a, uh, a cleaver like this is somewhat natural because the cleaver already has a 20% uh, in uh, built-in ability to behead. So by adding five levels, I increased it by an additional 50%, which allowed it to get up to a 70% beheading value. So you'll want to be cautious with it, of course, because you don't want to get killed, but it can definitely help make things a lot easier with obtaining those uh, hard-to-get wither skeleton skulls that you're looking for. Here we have Smite. This allows you a lot more damage to undead. Uh, it stacks quite well and can be used in the world. Now what that means, allow me to grab a couple of these here. I have some of these tools. Now these are both writing tools. You see that the attack damage on there is two. <laughs> the attack damage on this one is 11.44. Uh, now this one here of course has Manilin on it though, so it's going to be a uh, considerably better than the others, but I'm just going to show you just how pathetic this is. There we go. 1.02. That's that's really that that's that's how many hearts I just took there. Now if I hit this guy here with a manilin cleaver, ooh, 8.58. Real impressive, right? Not so much. Let's go over to this nice little tulip field here and set ourselves up a nice friendly little wither uh, <laughs> just for demonstration purposes of course oh i didn't want to put that on my head there we go let's just add this here here and there we go we've got our friend the uh wither now of course i'm in creative right now uh, it's just so that i can make things a little bit more applicable but you'll see that once he's done and ready uh, of course he's going to ignore me because i am currently in creative but he's going to try and kill nearby Critters. Can I hit him? Where'd he go? There you go. One hit took away a large chunk of his uh, health. Of course, this is a Manilin Cleaver, but you can see it is currently able to kill him very quickly. And this is this is Manilin and Paper with uh, max levels of Smite. Now, allow me to go back to the uh, crafting table. Before I show you a little bit about this, my, I just want to demonstrate a little bit more about how this is. Now I've got a paper broadsword. You can see it does like a heart of damage. It, it, it's pretty pathetic, really. Let's use the cleaver just so I can finish off this, uh, <laughs> this guy eventually. Now if I were to use a skeleton, and with this has smite 5 on it, he goes down in a single hit, uh, regardless of catching on fire. You can see that these guys are, are really easy to defeat now if they're undead because they've got Smite. Smite is very strong, very strong. Allow me to demonstrate by putting one of these in here and you can see the stats. Versus undead, plus 35. So <laughs> that's quite a bit. Now, of course, uh, the, um, the uh, consecrated soil... The recipe for that is you have to make graveyard soil and smelt it in a furnace. The recipe for graveyard soil is rotten flesh, dirt, and bone meal. Now, by putting that on there, uh, it well, it just gives it tremendous amounts of damage against undead. I, I have to say, I mean, look, your normal damage for this, plus 35, which is huge. I mean, you're doing half that in the number of hearts. So uh, that would be 15, 16, 17 and a half hearts just versus undead uh, and extra to that. So it's... It's very strong, but uh, I am going to show you a little bit something else here. Now, you'll notice that we have some graveyard soil here, plus a dispenser, with ha which happens to have uh, skeletons in it. And we've got some consecrated soil here with skeletons in a dispenser. I used some bone blocks above, so just so that they wouldn't burn uh, when we spawned them in. But let's bring in some consecrated soil here, and you can see that these guys are currently, well, he's, he's currently burning because it's consecrated soil, regardless of the fact that he's got cover above him. This, this soil will just wreck undead creatures uh, that are touching it because, well, it's holy stuff, I guess. Graveyard soil, which does the exact opposite. So I have this, uh, this guy here, and I'm going to use a regular... You, you see here, he's actually open to the sky. He's burning. He's on fire. But he's not losing any health. Reason for that? He's on graveyard soil. Now, if you do a quick spike damage, you might be able to kill him that way. But it's it's really going to be beneficial to any kind of necromancer types uh, that want to keep around their uh, undead so that they can heal them 
or just use it for effect. And speaking of adding specialized modifiers, for those that are a bit squeamish, don't like their spiders or silverfish, you can add in fermented spider eyes and make yourself uh, very special abilities here just for killing those specific items. Now let me uh, remove this other sword here. You can see versus spiders or uh, silverfish as well. <laughs> Plus 35. This is five levels. So, you know, one level is going to get you a fifth of this, but uh, you get the idea. It's it's very strong, very strong. Let me um, spawn in a spider and you can see I've got a regular paper broadsword. It does like a heart and a half, maybe, maybe just a heart, just a heart. So it takes quite a while to kill a spider with a paper broadsword. Now, if I bring one in and I do a paper broadsword with this uh, spider enhancement, it, it's it's a swatter. It, it's just going to take him out without any issue. <laughs> so so there you go. Uh, of course, the I'm using paper tools just so I can get that writable tool two on there, as well as demonstrate the uh, ability that they have practically no attack damage on there whatsoever. But if you really want to be able to kill spiders or silverfish, there's your solution. All right, this is where we really get into some interesting synergies. Fiery. By adding blaze powder to your tools or weapons, it will deal fire damage on hit, and it will set the target on fire. It stacks quite well and is very similar to uh, the damage um, that you can gain from sharpness. Uh, but uh, there's, there's some really good synergies here. I'm going to grab a couple of these tools, and we're going to grab a couple more here just because we're going to need them uh, for the demonstration here. Now I'm going to equip this uh, shield here which is currently spiky, super heat, fiery, uh, which actually let me, let me grab one of these here and uh, show you the difference, the abilities that these give you. I'm putting it in here you can hover over it. Spikes, uh, blocking deals damage to the spiker. Super heat, uh, deals bonus damage to enemies on fire. Fiery, which by adding that uh, if you hit the enemy, it will set your enemies on fire. So therefore, it can uh, deal damage, uh, set them on fire, as well as gain bonus damage to fire. Now, I also have this Magma Slime Broadsword. Uh, it is Enderference just to, to stop Enderman from teleporting. Super Heat, uh, deal bonus damage to enemies on fire, and Lightweight to make it faster. Uh, and it has not been enhanced. None, none of these have been except for the Burning ability. So if I drop a Spider over here, which seems to be the uh, the the guy to go to for today. Plus my sword, and I turn my game mode back to zero so that I become dangerous to him. Poke him with my hand. Then he comes up, hits me. You can see he's taking damage from the uh, from the shield having the uh, uh, spiky effect on there. So you're going to want to be cautious because you're not always going to set them on fire. And of course, you want to make sure that it's not a broken tool as well. Now, if I bring him in here, hit him with the sword, and then I block. Nothing happens. Still not going to do it. I mean, sure, he's taking damage from the spiky. But if I use this as a weapon, and then I hit him with it, it's going to make a big difference. Because it sets him on fire. Then I can block and do the extra damage as well. So it's something that you're going to want to be aware of on how that works. You have to actually have hit the enemy with it for that to work. Now, opposite of that, let's switch things up a bit. I've got a regular wooden battle sign. It can only It's only got 60 durability, right? So it's just basically a wooden shield. Uh, and I also have a pig iron broadsword. It's pig iron uh, 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 sword blade. It's a pig iron uh, wide guard, and it has the uh, flammable ability on there. Now, this is just for reference points. This isn't to do with flammable, but you can definitely add this in there and make it work to your advantage. But if I hit this guy, let's just poke him once and get his attention, and I block. Wait a minute, I'm setting him on fire. How did I, how did I set him on fire? Well, the way that I set him on fire is because of my sword. My sword currently has the flammable option on there, and I was blocking with a shield. Of course, it's also a tasty sword, so I just ate a bit of it. But uh, <laughs> the how this works is that uh, if I put the sword in here, you could probably better see that it has the flammable option on here. Blocking blocks fire damage and sets the attacker on fire. You combine that with some kind of shield that might have super heat, and therefore you've got a really, really good combo. Uh, one that will also deal bonus damage 
to uh, your foe, and by blocking, they're set on fire. You then do extra damage to them and so on. It, it can be really, really good how you can stack these, uh, like the different blocking effects can be on your weapon if you can use a shield with it at the same time. So you can combine those together. And flammable is, uh, or fiery, is one of the ones that you're definitely going to want to look into for that. This one here is necrotic. Necrotic is, well, the necrotic bone. Uh, you add that onto uh, your different weapons, and you'll gain different amounts of health uh, upon hit. 10% life steal uh, per hit. And it stacks up to, uh, I believe, uh, 5, I think? Uh, what, how many do I have on here? Currently, these are just regular Night Slime paper tools, but the, uh, they are there just for demonstration purposes once again. So let me get this uh, a spider out here. And I've got a rapier, which will only do a little bit. So I'm hitting him a bunch. You can see I'm actually gaining my health back a little tiny bit at a time. It's just 10%. So I've got to hit him a lot in order to get that health back. So it, it can be quite dangerous uh, if you're doing something that doesn't do a lot of damage, like a rapier. Uh, now, in this case, it's a paper rapier, so it only does like a half a heart of damage uh, each attack. Now, if I bring something into play like that and I use a cleaver, boom, you notice my health went all the way up. Let's, let's get one upset at me and have him do some damage first. There we go. Now let's finish him off. And I start gaining back my health much quicker because I'm doing a lot more damage to the enemy. I just gained like three and a half hearts there. And then I gained a bit more. So you can see that uh, by having uh, a much higher damaging tool, you can gain a lot more life back. But this also isn't just restricted to melee weapons. You can use it on ranged weapons as well, which is really, really nice. All right, now this one here is a lot of fun. <laughs> knockback uh, or uh, yeah just basically knockback now in this case I've got a writable frying pan and I've got knockback 5 if you add creative modifiers yes there's a, uh, a creative let's see here there it is the creative modifier you have to be in creative to do so you can stack this I think up to like a hundred or something I, I didn't have the patience for it but um, the, the number of times you can add one of these on here is is just ridiculous um, I don't think I have any more modifiers left on any of these other tools I have so let me uh, let me grab a, a, a wooden pickaxe here put that in place and you can see that it actually will take 10 per level so it's similar to like a lapis add-on or a sharpness add-on. And you can see it, it added like the, the, the piston effect look on there. But uh, let's just give you an example of uh, what happens here. When I uh, drop down a little friend on here, and then we hit him with frying pan. Bye-bye! And that was knockback 5. Uh, of course, you don't have to go with knockback 5. <laughs> you, you can just uh, decide to, you know, just hit them normally. Bing! And they'll go a good distance, but I was using the ability to also, like, kind of wind up attack for these guys. And uh, just one or two levels can often mean the difference between uh, life and death if you are trying to get enemies away from you. <laughs> like that one there. Not that I was doing any damage to speak of, but it, it can be a lot of fun. And yes, this does work with ranged weapons as well, so uh, it can be of great benefit to you to keep them away from you while you're shooting them at a distance. Keep in mind though that it's not always going to affect every enemy. Some enemies will have immunity to uh, knockback effects. And here we have the height and width bonuses uh, that are called expanders. So in the, your little materials in your book, there are little a little bit confusing here. Let me uh, go back here, modifiers, and we can choose. It says height double plus, width double plus. They're actually called expanders. Uh, so if you're trying to find how to make them in there, it, it can be a little bit confusing. But the recipe is just a couple pistons, slime ball, and lapis. And of course, the, uh, the other one, the width, is going to be similar, just on its side instead. And they work very similarly. Uh, in this case, let me grab a, uh, let's, let's get these set up here so I can actually make one of these here for you. And they only can be used once. Yeah, you see here, can only be used once. And this hammer is already enhanced with it. You notice here, this is dirt, so this isn't going to affect it. But if I go over to this, holy cow, look at that. It, it's really high now. It, it actually goes pretty darn high. In fact, higher than what I have there. Let's add another layer of stone and see just how high, wow, 
quite effective. So it adds an extra three blocks above and three blocks below in this case. Now if I were to use a shovel, this only mines one block. You'll notice that it currently is mining two. And you'll be like, well, how does this, wait, wait, where are those lines going up and down up it's all on where you're aiming on the block so if i want to aim to the side it's not going to make a difference because this is a height modifier so it's up or down so you can dig uh one by two holes or mine that way with a pick if you want uh, but here's the other thing it also works with uh, a scythe as well so if i'm aiming at the top here let, let's uh hover above so you can see a little bit better and clear my screen here now if i were to ooh, there we go. You see the center block, which is not highlighted, it acts just like if I'm mining a wall. Now it also will act like that if I aim at the side of a block. You see here it only does a three block area in front of it. So you're going to want to aim for the top of the block when you're using a scythe for clearing fields so that you can get a better effect. Uh, and these will stack with uh, other things. For instance, height. And width. Uh, actually, I think I just marked these ones reverse <laughs> now that I think about it. But the, they're so close, it doesn't really make a difference here. Let me uh, grab this scythe so that we can uh, show the difference here. We've got one of them is currently the height, and then we've got the width. And you can combine them together uh, and use them. There we go. By adding that on there, it now gains height and width before it just had height. Let's add that there. And now when I go over here, it's going to be an even bigger area. Of course, once again, I'm going to want to aim for the top of the block, not the side. Because if I aim for the side of this grass, it's only going to clear like in a half moon shape in front of me. Uh, whereas if I aim for the top, it clears a really big circle area. Really, really effective. And you can use it for harvesting your crops in such a manner as well. And of course, you can do the same thing with a, a shovel. Uh, and uh, hammer as I was demonstrating here which allow me to upgrade these there we go and now when I go over here with my shovel now of course this works for pickaxes and things like that too but you can see now uh, as I rotate to the different sides of this center square uh, it changes the orientation so it makes it a two by two now remember this will do a two by two for a pick as well once it's fully upgraded so it might not be something that you want to get into it's more for something like a hammer because if you aim for the center of this block holy cow look at that area it's covering boom now it doesn't do a square it does a three by three uh, or not a three by three, a three by five and a three by five, which leaves the corners intact. So you can be very effective with this. Allow me to demonstrate a little bit more down in the mine. Now I currently am in creative, so therefore this is not going to be uh, <laughs> true, but as far as the speed, but you can see how it will affect the area. Now if I aim in the center, it's just going to destroy everything in that area, but it's not going to, you know, do more to like, let's say, dirt you see it doesn't actually touch that because this is a, a regular hammer so it's not supposed to be mining dirt but there you go now you have an idea of what the height and width modifiers can do it can really speed along your progress with uh, doing some strip mines and uh, getting you your materials that you're looking for and here we have mending moss mending moss is very different from how it used to work uh, it's more along the lines of how vanilla uh, mending works now so it has different properties and a lot of people don't understand how this works per se it is made in a similar fashion a bunch of moss stone together will make you a ball of moss let me actually grab one of these and what you're supposed to do with it is right click on a bookshelf oh there you go and you get your mending moss so you can add up to three levels on this and each one will give you a different ability on mending uh, though I recommend if you're going to put mending on something, uh, make it something that's not going to have to uh, need a lot of repair, like a, a hammer that is being used constantly over a long period of time will probably wear out before you're able to break it. Now on a weapon, it's going to be very effective. So it will repair the tool over time. It's like every, I don't know, five or seven seconds, something like that. And it's XP reliant so you have to gain some XP and each different level will store a different amount of XP in the tool now if you look here I currently have this with mending moss on it I have this one with mending moss 2 and I have this one with mending moss 3 and they all three have the same durability 3 out of 3 out of 515 now if I were to go into the world 
and gain myself uh, some experience. Actually, I, I, I don't even need that because I have in here a bunch of bottles of enchanting so that I can get myself the XP that I'm looking for. And there we go. And oh, I'm, I'm taking some damage. I forgot to my infinite hammer. I, I threw it away instead of actually eating it. So my bad. But here we go. You see here that I currently have three, three, and three. Now they are going to repair at different rates uh, with the bottle O enchanting. And if I toss this into the sky, there we go. I just gained a little bit of experience. Wait a second. Nothing's repairing. What the heck? Seems to not work. Oh no. No, it's working as intended. You need to actually be holding the tool to gain that experience onto the tool to allow it to start repairing. So what you need to do, toss it and then gain the XP, XP, toss it up, next one, toss it up, and the third one. There we go. So now I have gained some XP in each one of these tools, and they'll repair at different rates, according to the amount of XP that I am gaining for each one. Now, that doesn't mean that it only gains levels from XP. It will absorb a lot of your XP, so you won't be gaining the levels as much as you would think. But if uh, it's just walking around, let's see, this one is at 23. 19, 15. So let's just walk around for a little bit and waste a few more seconds of me just jabbering on about absolutely nothing so that we can check this out in a second. All right, so now we've got 33, 23, 18. So you can see just by having it on your hotbar and it having some experience stored into it, you have to have primed it with a bit of experience at least for it to start doing so. And it has to be on your tool, on your hotbar, or on your in your uh, offhand, like your shield slot if you want. So you could feasibly you know, just toss one of these up, hold on to, to two of them, but it, it might only go into one. I didn't really test that out too much, but <laughs> you get the idea. So as a, in my experience, I was finding that every few seconds it starts repairing from the XP that you picked up. Mending one, it repairs about three durability. Mending two, around four. Mending three, somewhere around five. So it might just be worthwhile to go for mending one, unless you really want uh, that uh, the tool to mend very fast, and uh, you're not worried about adding the modifiers for other effects. Next up, we have blasting. This one here is is more of a joke than anything else, uh, or people that really don't care about their um, the need for uh, any kind of um, materials. <laughs> the reason being is that uh, this. It mines slower on uh, the same level or lower than it's currently set up. Like this one here is set up to, up to diamond. But I mean, it's going to mine a little bit slower. And it mines faster on higher uh, difficulty things. Uh, let's say obsidian. It will mine faster on obsidian than uh, the once you add the blasting modifier to it than that tool normally would. But it will mine slower on things uh, less likely, like um, uh, stone perhaps. It will mine very slow. And what does each level of blasting allow? Well, you ha you can have up to three levels of blasting. As you can see here, I've got nothing. Uh, I've got, well, nothing, one, two, and three. They're all magnetic three because they're all just pure iron hammers. Uh, and then each one, each level will add a third chance for it to, for you to lose the materials that you just mined. <laughs> so if you have a level three blasting, you're going to lose all the materials on that one. Uh, and it stacks up to three. Uh, and therefore, let's jump into the mine and I can demonstrate just how damaging this can be. So let's just say you just want a tunnel going somewhere and you really don't care about materials at that point. Then blasting is going to be for you. Hello, go away. You can see that it doesn't affect mobs uh, with the blasting effect. It only will affect the uh, the stuff that you're mining. So let's start mining here. You can see that was kind of a an average speed here. But you're also noticing I'm not in creative, and I'm not uh, getting any ma drops or materials from that. I'm getting the XP from it, which is nice, but it's not actually uh, dropping anything. That's because that one had the Blasting 3 on it. Now, if I go with this one here with Blasting 2, you'll notice it's it's even slower. And yeah, that's that's really slow in comparison. Uh, it's It's extremely slow but and it's dropping some stuff not very much though you notice i only get like four diorite and two cobblestone now if i go with um uh blasting one it's even slower i do get some of the drops you, you notice on occasion it has the explosions uh for the ores you might lose the ores on that uh, let's see definitely we'll lose them here <laughs> but you can see i got a lot more materials from that and of course the uh, the normal speed of an iron hammer 
is actually faster than the first couple levels there. Now, of course, with the uh, the blasting level three, it actually will increase the speed slightly there, so it's going to be a little bit nicer. Uh, the lower level, it's going to be a little bit slower. So if you just need to make a hole and you really don't want anything dropping, then blasting is going to be the modifier for you. This one here is quite possibly one of my favorite new modifiers to Tinker's Construct 2. And that, my friends, is glowing. It does use up durability on the tool. You'll need two pieces of glowstone and one eye of ender, and you will get glowing. Can you put it on there multiple times? No. You can only put it on there once, because that's all you really need. Now, if I hold this tool, and I'm in a low light area, you'll notice that the durability on this is 8. It will, therefore, place a glow ball in an area that has a light level of eight or less. Now if I go down into this mine area here where it's a little bit dark, I might actually use up a little bit of durability by placing this. Just I'm just walking nearby and you notice it used up one of the durability. It placed one of these little glow balls here that you can also make in uh, you know Tinker's Construct with snowballs and uh, glowstone. But if I'm in a dark enough area, it will start using up the durability to create uh, light sources for you. So if you put this on your tools, one, two, three, but you have to be cautious with this. Uh, it, for instance, I have this one here on Old Flinty, and he has a ton of durability, so it's not a problem. He's also kind of rainbow colored. It's really cool. But uh, <laughs> it, it's not a big effect on that. Now, if I have something with a lower durability, or if I have uh, a tool underwater, there's something that you might need to be aware of. So you'll notice down there in the water, it's rather dark. Well, if I go down into the water, oh, the tool instantly broke. Why is that? Well, watch what happens when I hold on to old flinty as well. You'll see that the screen is flickering. Why is it flickering? It's because it's trying to constantly put a, a glow ball in the water, but is being uh, destroyed as well. You'll see that the, well, besides me uh, slowly drowning, let me uh, get back up and get a breath of fresh air you'll see that uh, the durability is just going down really fast because it's trying to place glow balls. So you're going to want to be very cautious about putting glowing on a tool that's underwater. And here we have another fun one, shulking. Shulking is, it's more of a joke than anything else, but I, I really do like it. It's um, kind of similar to knockback, but instead you're kind of like levitating your enemy. Uh, so I have here shulking. It, it You only get the one level on it, and you can max it out to a certain point. For instance, I have a, a wooden pickaxe here, and it requires popped chorus fruit. Uh, chorus fruit is from chorus fruit in the, that you get it in the end that you have smelted. And by putting it on there, you can uh, <laughs> max it out at up to 50 for one level's worth. Float duration of 1.75 seconds. I haven't been able to get it above that, but uh, that's pretty much all you can do. Now, in this case... Uh, if I have a mob nearby, let me uh, actually bring one out here, and I hit him with my shulking broadsword, you can see he's floating away. It, so it, it doesn't make them go away, it just makes them kind of harmless for a couple seconds there, which is rather entertaining. Or I could use my, my special squeaky shuriken and just make him fly away and do no damage to him. Bye! Bye! We'll see you later! And then I shoot him when he comes down to the ground. Or he just dies from fall damage. But you get the idea. Anyway, um, shulking is kind of a, a, a little bit of a joke modifier, but it is a lot of fun. So I recommend you you at least have a few items that are uh, good for you. I mean, heck, I put it on this uh, sponge paper shuriken just because it does no damage. And all it does is make things levitate. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Here we have webbed. Uh, webbed here is, is kind of... Uh, Kind of interesting. You can have up to three levels on here. As you can see here, I have a writable tool or a writable weapon, and it's not allowing me to add any more to it. You'll need cobwebs. And what this does is it gives a slowness effect. So once again, let's bring our, uh, oh, you know what? A spider friend would be a bad choice because they have free movement through webs. But you know what? It doesn't work that way because it just gives them a slow effect. So if I hit this guy and he tries coming after me, he gets slowed. It only lasts for a couple seconds, though, just like the uh, the other abilities. So, oops, let's let's not get carried away now. You you slow there. <laughs> now the other thing is, is that uh, it it it's not 
lasting that long. It's a little underpowered compared to some of the other modifiers that you can have, but if you have infinite modifiers to put on there or you have uh, some kind of leveling thing, it can be quite beneficial to add, give that slow ability to uh, your targets. And remember, it uh, will still slow them. It gives a potion effect on there. So unless they have a, uh, a potion <laughs> in immunity, it should work quite well. And here we have fins. Fins can be a little confusing at first. You're like, wait, why do I want to put fins on anything? Uh, I will give you an example of why you want to put fins on things. And you only put one level on there. It only requires two raw fish, but it allows your projectiles to ignore water. Let me get over to uh, a watery area here and I can show this off to you. So you can see here I have a slime shuriken and whoop, I uh, forgot I'm still wearing my slimy boots. Uh, if I throw this in the water, Oh, it just splashes instantly and, and drops down. That's that's pretty bad, actually. I, I could barely hit anything with that because it loses all functionality under the water. Now, if I use Slime Shuriken with fins, you'll see that it just shoots through the water like normal. So I, therefore, can start spamming those, which is really beneficial. If I use a, a bow with special abilities, then I might be able to uh, better use that. But otherwise, fins is really good to replace some effects that you might need later on. And then we've got a couple modifiers that don't use up modifier slots. Uh, we have here uh, one of the best new additions, in my opinion, and that is the Nether Star. By adding a Nether Star to a tool, let's grab a wooden hatchet here. You, whoops, let me uh, switch these places. Uh, it then becomes soul bound. And what that means is it allows the tool to therefore, as you can see, I've got it here on there and here and here. I've got it on a bunch of my tools. It allows you to keep the tool or weapon after you die. So if you die upon respawning, it stays in your inventory. It's fantastic. And it doesn't use up any modifier slots. So you can keep your uh, Tinker's tools. Uh, you can, they're immune to uh, fire and burning damage. They're also not able to be destroyed by practical vanilla, cra vanilla means. So unless you throw it into the void or use some kind of other mod to throw it into a garbage can or something, your tools and weapons should be able to exist forever if you so desire. Now, other things that you can do, and that is pretty much going to be upgrading stuff. Let me grab uh, this here. If I get, no, I don't want the wooden hatch. I want the wooden pickaxe. If I put a wooden pickaxe here and you add in a sharpening kit and a flint, you gain fortified. Now, this also does not use any, any modifier slots it will change the mining level of the tool that you are using. Uh, so therefore you can upgrade your wooden pickaxe in this case to mine things like cobalt. <laughs> it may take you a bit because it's going to be very slow, but you can still mine cobalt with it. In fact, you can even mine obsidian with this at an extremely slow speed, but you can still mine it. Uh, other than that, if you wanted specific tools to be downgraded, this actually gives you the option to do so. Uh, if I have, let's uh, grab here, um, I want a cobalt pickaxe. There we go. We're going to grab one of those and we're going to grab a wooden sharpening kit. Well, if you're familiar with Minecraft, you know that wooden tools will only mine stone at best. So I could actually have a downgraded cobalt pickaxe if I so desired. Now, why would you want to do this? I'm not sure, but it's really nice to have the option to be able to switch these out. Uh, now, feasibly, you could downgrade it with a wooden sharpening kit and try and repair it with that. No, it, it it doesn't work that way. It, it still would need to be repaired with cobalt. So this does not change how it repairs. It just changes its mining level. And there is one last thing I feel I should mention, and that is uh, how modifier order versus appearance works. So to give an example, there are some that believe that, uh, you know, you have to add another quartz last uh, and blaze powder first or, you know, certain modifiers. They shouldn't function to uh, allow one better than the other. Uh, to give an example here, I have fractured splintering beheading to sharp fiery to uh, cleaver, bone cleaver here, and I have its twin next to it. It does the same attack damage, same attack speed. Everything is the same, but it looks visually different. The reason for that is because I gave this one here. I gave the uh, fiery two first, and then I sharpened it. This one here, I sharpened it first and then gave it the fiery effect. So you can see that visually it's uh, it will affect it, but otherwise they will still do the same. And just to verify, we're going to run over here. Oops, actually, I've got a bunch of uh, these dummies here that I can show you guys with. I'm going to hit this guy here, 
we do 13.321143 damage. This one here, 13.321143 damage. And they basically have everything the same, just different order that they were put together with. So you can change the look of your uh, weapon or tool depending on the order that you decide to uh, enhance it. So keep that in mind when you're creating your tools and you should make one that's aesthetically a little bit more pleasing than uh, the one that you might have had before. So I hope you guys enjoyed this bit by bit on Tinker's Construct 2 modifiers. If so, please give a like, comment below, subscribe, and don't forget to share the mischief with others if, they, if you think they'll enjoy this content too. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.